Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox, Synchrobol Space Program 1.8.1. Recently I added a few parts to my small rockets pack, the VLM parts from Brazil. Mainly I wanted them because they were solid rocket motors and I didn't have many of those in the shear strut engine pack or the small rockets pack. And I've decided to add a few more things to the shear strut engine pack and small rockets pack for use with RP2000. And of course I added the pricing to RP2000, so that's three mods that I've been updating and I will link them in the video description, of course. Uh, but if you do have requests for parts for these particular mods, either small rockets, which includes CubeSats and other small parts, the Shirstra engine pack, which is a general pack of generic engine parts, uh, or to RP2000, RP2000 is mainly about pricing things for a career mode, uh, please do tell me. But yeah, so I had added these VLM parts and they were SRBs, but we have some other new parts that I would like to introduce so that you know they're there. And the first is a much needed comm dish, interplanetary comm dish alpha, I decided to call it. Uh, it's a fairly long range dish and mainly it's because I didn't really like the RA2 parabolic antenna that we've been using in RP2000 in my career mode uh, series. And it, it's fairly short range sometimes. It's bulky. Uh, we can see it compared to this new dish. It's larger and it's got this sort of bracket thing. Uh, so I didn't really like that. Uh, this one is a longer range dish that can potentially communicate to Jupiter at the level 3 DSN, but no further than that. And it's just a direct dish. Uh, otherwise, it should be reliable on the level 2 DSN to Mars and Venus, so that's its goal. And yeah, it's always open, it's not going to be a problem to use it for a lander because it might overstress in the atmosphere or anything like that. It's about the same, it's only a little bit less mass than that one, uh, but it is cheaper. So yeah, I just created that dish. I created a modern control core here. Uh, there's a black box in there, there's sort of an Arduino there and some battery. And that's just a small control core that takes the place basically conceptually of the early controllable core, which is fairly bulky considering our modern electronics. Early controllable core it was not early electron, uh, it was not modern electronics, it was early electronics like 1950s and 1960s. So it's not really appropriate for the year 2000. And so I created this uh, probe core to take its place. So that is an option. And then uh, Dalad Root, who has been using my RP2000 career, uh, requested a biology experiment. Let me just reroute so that we can take this off. Uh, I just put some plants in here. I don't know if this is a good thing or not. Uh, those two nubs are actually from the engine there. Um, it still has the Arduino and the battery and we've got a, little, a bunch of little plants. It functions as a goo experiment right now. It's just uh, it's just a different version of the mystery goo, uh, but it's sort of convenient that it's in the same for form factor as this, of course, and it's much smaller than the actual goo experiment, though volume-wise, I guess it's not too different when you look at it. Uh, so it's not radial, it's an inline goo experiment, basically. And yeah, but I should probably create some new experiments to do. I think that that would be a good thing, a whole new array of experiments. I'd wanted to do that, but it takes some time to configure how much they should be worth, right? I mean, uh, if you add a whole bunch of experiments to it, you unbalance the whole thing, because now there's a whole lot more ways for people to get science, and if there are a lot of ways to get science, then you basically need to cut down the value of the science, otherwise you're going to get a flood of science and you'll unlock everything way too quickly. And then you're on warp drives in the blink of an eye. Uh, 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 c considering that RP2000, the career mode, uh, allows for KSB Interstellar. So, yeah, we, we don't necessarily want to go that far. So the whole making new experiments thing has been a little bit of a, a dicey subject as far as things are concerned. We've got two new liquid engines. So... Uh, this biology experiment, that probe core, and that antenna come with the small rockets pack. And then for shear strut engines, we have this engine, which is a Hydrolox engine. And basically, it's meant to take the place of the RL-10. Uh, because the RL-10, you have to do a deal with a company in order to do it. This is a researchable in the normal part of the tech tree RL-10 
for RP2000. And so you'll get it. Uh, the unit cost will be cheaper, but the research cost will be more expensive. 102.5 kilonewtons, uh, 455.6 seconds of ISP, not the best sort of RL10 level, but tolerable. And 10 ignitions, so fairly normal sort of situation. And then we have an engine that I had to make for Star Stage 2, and this is a methane oxygen engine that gets 250 kilonewtons, 367.3 seconds of ISP, uh, heavier of course. It does have some throttle range, and it's got a very long nozzle. I mean, it could be even more impressive of a nozzle, but yeah, it's obviously vacuum optimized, 367. It's not a stage combustion thing, so yeah, it's not gonna get that kind of ISP, but I think it's. I think I meant for it to be expander cycle. Uh, this is also expander cycle. So, anyway, then you see this large thing here, and I I'm not a big fan of this large thing, uh, but I figure some people might be. Basically, this is a replica of the AJ260. Uh, we're not calling it that because if it was AJ260, then it'd have to be in the Aerojet Rocketdyne slot in the tech tree and then you'd have to pay them for it. Uh, but instead, this is a researchable one, so I named it the SM222, uh, just solid motor, and then or shear strut motor. And 222 indicates the maximum thrust, uh, 22,241. I differ on this compared to the AJ260 configuration it comes with realism overhaul. I don't know where they got their number from, <laughs> basically. Uh, actually, uh, I've leaned towards their mass, uh, the dry mass, but actually the masses I saw were lighter than that, so I don't know uh, where they got their numbers from, but uh, I took their uh, quantity of P-band at least, uh, that's the same, and yeah, so it is a huge solid motor that is meant to be a single stage. It is uh, remarkably heavy. And it is not meant to be a strap-on booster. Uh, it is, as far as I know, it was going to be welded together. So there are weld lines. Not particularly smooth weld lines because I literally had to paint them across. I don't know, uh, I have to learn in Substance Painter how to do a straight line. <laughs> uh, I was not able to do a straight line weld in Substance Painter, unfortunately. And I was aiming for a lighter body, like more of a white body, but... Um, didn't quite make that, so I'll have to look into that. But as far as the numbers are concerned, uh, so it's got two degrees in gimbling. This is just by injecting something into the nozzle to vector it, uh, so not much control there. Uh, I changed the description. It's not a strap-on booster, obviously. That was just accidentally uh, copied from the other thing, and it's 847 tons. So dry mass is about 10%, which is really for an SRV not bad. Uh, I used the same texture for this little thing because uh, basically I wanted to keep the texture size limited. I didn't want to take up too much space. But this is essentially the equivalent of uh, Gem 63. It has the Gem 63 numbers. It's, it's really a Gem 63, we just don't want to call it that. And so, yeah, 1,663, this is, of course, a strap-on booster. With the normal decouplers, it seems to go off okay, uh, but so you don't need a separatron, but it won't fly out in a very convincing manner. It'll be really tight, so you might still want separatrons, but it's possible to just have it like this. And, yeah, that is just a little SRB for us. I didn't deliberately make it look like the Gem 63 because it is meant to be a generic one that is part of the tech tree. So that's just a rundown of new parts and again if you and they are all priced. Let's take a look at where they are in the tech tree just so you know. Okay so the VLM parts incidentally are in basic rocketry. They are just little SRBs and not especially complicated ones. Uh, the SM16 sod motor is here in heavy rocketry and then of course as you might expect the SM222 is in very heavy rocketry. Uh, survivability the biology experiment is here.
And so that's the plants because, well, you're learning how to survive in space. So I guess that works. Okay, the probe core, the modern command core was in stability. So there, modern control core is in stability there. And the comm dish, the new comm dish that we have is in space exploration, interplanetary comm dish alpha. The new Hydrolox engine is here in, where is that? There we go, in advanced rocketry. And finally, the methane oxygen 250 kilonewton one is in precision propulsion, which is all the way up here, actually. So that is that one. The description is wrong. I should replace that. That's because basically it's a copied part from this one. It's just made larger to get 250 kilonewtons. It's the same model. Uh, so, yeah, I'll have to change that description, but it's 250 kilonewtons there. So anyway, they are there. They are priced properly, as far as I can tell. Uh, uh, the single unit cost of that huge solid rocket motor is $36 million, basically. That's what it translates to. Seems reasonable to me. Anyway, so with that, and I'll link the mods in the video description, uh, so with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.